Yo guys, welcome back to another video. I have my hands on the Samsung S22 Ultra. You guys know what we're going to do. We're going to be comparing it to my professional stills camera, the Canon EOS R6. This whole setup that I have down here will run you about $5,000 if you were to buy the camera and the lens. So as always, we're going to be going one after the other with each camera uh, and then make a little guess, see if you can spot which camera you think is which. Here is shot number one, a bit of sunset action for the first few photos in this video and then shot number two. This one is shot with the main camera lens on the S22 Ultra. Uh, as you can see, obviously a few different lenses on the phone here. This main lens is a 108 megapixel sensor that actually pixel bins down to a 12 megapixel shot. So this is taking a lot of the benefit from that 108 megapixel uh, read and then basically combining it into a lower resolution photo, but that still just packs in a really, really big punch. So what did you think about the first one? You would be right if you said that the S22 Ultra was the second shot here. The first shot was the R6. First of all, I am exposure correcting and also adding a little bit of saturation to the R6 shots. One of the advantages of these cameras is that they allow you to edit these photos quite dramatically. It'd be very, very easy for you guys if I left an unedited shot uh, on the R6 and then compared that to the Samsung shots because Samsung is doing a lot of this hard work for you. So I'm kind of matching the exposure and matching the saturation just to make sure it's a little bit challenging. I don't know about you guys, I actually think the light Lighting is more pleasing uh, in the S22 Ultra shot here. Uh, you can see that there's just a ton of detail retained in the stones, retained in the skies. Sunsets just look absolutely amazing uh, on phones. I think manufacturers are doing such a good job basically uh, combining a lot of HDR goodness in these photos to expose for both the highlights and the shadows. It's just so impressive and it's something you can't really do uh, incredibly easy on a bigger camera. Next up, this is a 3x zoom shot on the S22 Ultra. This camera uses a 12 megapixel sensor. So as soon as you go up to that 3x zoom on this camera, you no longer get access to that 108 megapixel sensor. So it's a 12 megapixel sensor on there. Still, in my opinion, really great. This one's the first shot uh, and this one is the second shot. So with this one, you'd be correct if you said the first one was the Samsung S22 Ultra and the second one was the Canon R6. I've got my phone here and I'm looking at the size of these shots and like looking on a screen like this, it's basically impossible to tell these photos apart. When you actually are zooming in, looking at them large like you guys uh, are in the video, things are a little bit more obvious, but if we actually take that scale and we scale that right down, you can see that these are very, very, very similar when these are viewed at sort of social media sizes. When you blow these photos up, that is when a lot of the differences are going to appear. Just for the challenge here though, I do think you'll find this one easy. So this shot is taken on the 10X zoom on the Samsung. So that that is a 230 millimeter equivalent. This one's shot one, and then this one is shot two. I do think this one's kind of obvious. I'll give you a second on your guess, but you'd be right if you said yes, shot one, S22 Ultra, and shot two was the R6. I didn't actually have a 230 millimeter lens with me for this. You can see that the focal range difference is the most obvious thing here. This is just absolutely crazy that this is on a phone. This is on a phone. Yeah, sure, like it's not as good a shot as the R6 shot, like this using optical uh, glass to actually, you know, zoom in and get a nice clean shot with a fast shutter. And there's a little bit of more blur in the Samsung shot, but like, insanely impressive. Last sunset shot, another one from that beautiful standard 26 millimeter lens with that 108 megapixel sensor. This one again, pretty tricky for me actually, like it really is quite hard to tell on these wide shots. Shot number two this time, S22 Ultra, and shot number one was the Canon EOS R6. Biggest giveaway for me for this one is on these wide shots, on some of these wider shots, uh, on a pro camera or a bigger camera with a larger sensor, often the edges of your frame are not going to be super super tack sharp, uh, unless you're working with very high fidelity lenses. On the S22 Ultra here, you can see that the edges of the frame are super tack sharp, and that might be an advantage or disadvantage. I do personally think it uh, leads to a slightly less natural looking photograph. That might well be preference, but on the whole, yeah, just again, super impressive from the Samsung here. Another real area where Samsung are focusing is low light performance. We've got a couple of low light comparisons here using the night mode, nightography mode. Uh, on the Samsung S22 Ultra. So we have a shot here 
and a shot here. First of all, just absolutely insane that these are really, really close, like super impressive low light performance now on the Samsung. You would be right if you said that shot number two was the Samsung S22 Ultra and the shot number one was the Canon EOS R6. Just a very quick look at this one. Like, look how much detail is in this car. Like, I shot this at 8,000 ISO on the R6 with an f.2 eight lens so really really exceptional that you're getting enough detail out of this shot next one shot number one and then shot number two this one really was pretty extreme the shot of the car had um quite a lot of light actually in it sort of ambient street light that type of thing this one really didn't have that much light you can see from one of these shots here is pretty really pretty dark however shot number one samsung s22 ultra and shot number two was the r6 and again this is just absolutely crazy like you can see the amount of detail in this sort of church shot here like really really exceptional even if we take this shot and boost up the exposure right in Lightroom from the R6, uh, you can see that the Samsung is just doing an insane job of capturing this photo without basically putting a ton of artificial noise in there. Samsung S22 Ultra, an amazing low light camera. So portrait mode is a massive thing on the Samsung S22 Ultra. Samsung using something called stereo depth mapping to basically ensure that the cutouts in portrait mode are uh, just extra crispy. I'm not deep diving into portrait mode specifically. If you're interested in a full breakdown, full photography review of the uh, Samsung S22 Ultra, let me know with a like rating down below. So we've got portrait mode shot number one. One of these shots is on the 3X lens. Uh, and the other is obviously on the Canon EOS R6. Give you a little second here on that one. One more quick second, finalize your guess. And yes, you're right, shot number two was the Samsung S22 Ultra. We're gonna power through these ones. I'm gonna go through my opinions and the differences and actually jump into Lightroom and actually show you those in action. Next portrait mode shot here is shot number one and shot number two. This one again, I do actually think these are a little bit easier than the standard sort of super wide shots. You'll be right if you guessed that shot number one was the S22 Ultra and shot number two was the Canon EOS R6. Final portrait mode shot. This is actually of an item I wanted to take myself out because actually shooting photos of yourself, not super easy. So it's probably not like the fairest test to the phones. Um, shot number one here and then shot number two. And then the answer to this one, shot number one was the Canon EOS R6, and shot number two was the Samsung S22 Ultra. So I've got these shots here in Lightroom just to talk about the portrait mode slightly. So going between these two, this one here was interesting. Uh, quite a lot of these portrait mode shots uh, were relatively soft. That's why I did the additional item shot, the Fuji shot, because um, I kind of feel like maybe this isn't super fair. Um, shooting yourself, you can't totally ensure that you're always in focus, but um, this was a recurring issue I had with portrait mode. Uh, there were quite a lot of relatively soft images. If we flick back and forward here, like this is a super easy one. Immediately you can see the differences between like which one is which. Also, skin tone's not great on the S22 Ultra here. You can see that this is relatively pink. Uh, if we flip back and forwards, like that is quite soft and like not great skin tones on that shot. Much better on the second one. This one is a good shot in my opinion. Uh, in terms of the edges, you can see that why I actually left the hat on in this. You can see that there's a couple of areas around here where the blur is not so good. It's just obviously had a hard time figuring out what to what to blur there. But I mean, it is pretty good. Like this is on the wide angle lens, uh, the one times 26 millimeter zoom. You can see that like the edges of my hair over here are cut out. The ear is very good. And overall, the hat is really decent. Let me flip to the uh, to the uh, Canon EOS R6 and obviously this is done optically uh, and this one does look really really good. This in my opinion is a real advantage of using a professional or more expensive camera is that obviously the depth is done using the sensor and using the lens as opposed to software features. And then here we have an example where actually in my opinion the Samsung actually comes up uh, on top. Um, you can see that like what's so impressive about these Samsung photos is the amount of light entering the sensor and it's done using the computational power. You can see that I have this shot here, like look how much light is hitting the wall. Uh, if I jump into the develop module in Lightroom, we can boost the shadows. You can see that very quickly the background starts looking uh, blown out and grainy, whereas like the detail on that shot is really, really good and the 
uh, the depth is actually pretty exceptional. So uh, that's a very, very good portrait mode shot. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this Samsung S22 Ultra is actually the best smartphone camera I've ever used. My personal phone is the Pixel 6. So maybe I'll do a comparison. Let me know again if, in the comments if you'd like to see that. I am super buzzed for the iPhone 14 to come out to really hit these camera comparisons nice and hard. If you are interested in how the Samsung S21 FE performed against my Canon C70, which is my professional cinema camera that's filming me right now, that link is on screen and I'll catch you next time.